What's up mathematicians, Justin here, and in this video I'll be introducing you to the concept of axiomatic systems. So before we get into it, uh, just want to take a minute to think about where we are right now. This is our second unit, and it's going to be about logic. The first unit was called measurement, and we looked at how we can use trigonometry and formulas to take measurements of things. Um, mostly distances done with trigonometry. We talked a little bit about area as well. And then at the end of the unit, we talked about measuring angles and finding the angle sum of a triangle. Uh, we left that unit trying, you know, thinking about how could we build up to proving something like the angle sum of a triangle. And in this unit, we're going to uh, take our first big step in that direction by looking at logic and also introducing this concept of axiomatic systems. So let's start with that idea of a of a of a fact, something that you know many of you have been um, taught as as a fact about geometry that the angle sum of a triangle is 180 degrees. So I'm going to say angle sum of a triangle. Okay, we have this fact, at least most of us probably believe that it's a fact, just hanging out here. Uh, and in order to have a lot of confidence in this fact, we want to build a structure underneath it. A structure that will support it, that will make us believe that it is in fact true and, and really uh, reliable and incontrovertible. And the system that we're going to use to build up to this fact is uh, what I'm calling, well, uh, mathematicians call an axiomatic system. Now, I won't be treating it, I guess I would say, not as formally as you probably would see in a college level math class. But I want you to have the general idea of what an axiomatic system is. So I like to think of an axiomatic system as like a brick wall or a brick structure. And for right now at least, at the top of that brick structure we're going to have this angle sum of a triangle. Now any brick in the brick structure is um, something we call a theorem. So let me just put an arrow here. So these are, and I'll draw a few more bricks in as well. These are theorems. And the, it turns out the angle sum of a triangle, uh, this rests on other bricks. It doesn't just sit up there all by itself. It relies on these other bricks, these other theorems. Okay, so, you know, this is another theorem. Okay, and these theorems are built on more theorems. And then there are other theorems built even above this. For example, you've probably heard of the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, it turns out the Pythagorean theorem is a theorem that's built uh, on top of, it, it, it takes a, a place above the angle sum of a triangle theorem. And, um, you know, below angle sum of a triangle, we have theorems about triangle equality, for example. You may have heard about things like SAS or ASA, okay? Um, and, uh, yeah, so there are, there are lots of different theorems. I'm going to list them all here. And, and you can actually... Uh, there's often multiple ways to, to structure this, but, um, but the point is all these theorems, you know, make this bricks, make the bricks of the structure. But what do these theorems sit on? There has to be a foundation. We can't just have a brick wall sort of floating up in the air, right? There has to be something reliable. There has to be a foundation, a really strong uh, like the concrete foundations that you know you'll find under real solidly built brick walls. So underneath all these bricks, we have the foundation. Okay, 
And our foundation for an axiomatic system is assumptions and definitions. And so we have to start with assumptions and definitions before we can use logic to come up with any theorems, any of these bricks. Um, okay, but you know, this leads to the question of what about the foundation? What, what is the foundation on? Is the foundation just sitting there? Um, you know, this kind of reminds me of the question, um, you know, there are different versions I've heard of this anecdote, but uh, typically it's ascribed to the physicist uh, Richard Feynman that, the, as, as the story goes, the Richard Feynman was giving a lecture talking about, I, I don't know, some, you know, scientific facts about the universe, about the earth, what have you. At the end of the lecture, uh, a woman comes up to him and says, oh, you know, uh, nice lecture, but unfortunately you're mistaken about something. You know, the earth is not this round sphere floating around in space. It's actually um, sitting, it's a flat earth that's sitting on the back of a giant turtle. And, you know, Richard Feynman, uh, you know, probably chuckled and, you know, is reported to have said, okay, but, but what is the turtle standing on? And she kind of shook her head like, you just don't get it. She's like, you don't understand. It's turtles all the way down. And it's this idea that, um, you know, if one thing is built on another and that thing is built on another and that thing is built on another, um, where do we start? Like, where is the bottom level? And what I'm saying for theorems is there is this foundation of axioms and definitions. But even this, uh, I would say there's something underlying um, our foundation here. And we could think of this as the ground. Um, here, you know, if you saw a brick wall somewhere, uh, you might or might not see the foundation it's sitting on, but that whole, th that whole structure, the brick wall on the foundation, it's all embedded in the ground, in the earth. So for us, the earth is the base level foundation where it all starts. And so in our analogy here, what is the earth? You know, what is all this sitting in? And for us, the earth is going to be logic and language. Now, you could take entire classes in college uh, studying, you know, where do things like logic and language get meaning from and, you know, uh, really getting into, you know, the, the structures of logic and language and, you know, how, I mean, these would be, these would be separate classes, right? You have a class about logic and classes about language, you know, how does language get its meaning? How is it that we're able to communicate? Um, I'm using English and, uh, you know, that, that's, that's my first language, well, my only language actually. So it's the language I need to use to communicate about these concepts. And if you don't understand the language I'm communicating in, you're not gonna be able to understand, uh, you're gonna have at least a more difficult time understanding these concepts. And this, this idea that we share this language and have shared meanings for all these words underlies all these things we're doing. Similarly, a shared understanding of logic underlies all these things that we're doing. Without these shared logic and language, uh, we wouldn't even be able to get started. We wouldn't even be able to get off the ground. So just a few words about uh, sort of the rules, and I guess we might see the logic of a system like this. Uh, whenever you're trying to prove some theorem, you are only allowed to use any previously proven theorems. You can't uh, take a theorem that's hanging out above a brick that's hanging out above the brick that you're trying to prove and use that. It'd be like trying to pull a brick out from the middle and it could cause other bricks to collapse, right? So anytime you're putting in a brick, anytime you're adding a theorem, it has to be built on, based on all the theorems below it. So, you know, we need to prove the, this, these theorems here before we prove these. We've got to prove these before this. 
uh, it has to go in this sequential order. We don't want circular reasoning, that's going to cause our wall to tumble down. And using a theorem that you haven't proved to prove a theorem and then prove that theorem, you know, that's circular reasoning. So we start uh, by taking these assumptions. And so our first theorems have to be based only on these assumptions and definitions using the tools of logic and language. And as we're building the structure, proving theorems based on theorems, based on theorems, based on the assumptions and definitions, we're doing it all using these two tools of logic and language. So that's just a quick introduction to axiomatic systems, at least the way I see them. Uh, I really like this analogy for looking at axiomatic systems and I hope you find it helpful as well. In the next video, we'll start looking at um, you know, some of the basics of logic. Thanks for watching and we'll see you then.